Hello and welcome to Modelling Misadventures. Now in an earlier video we got to this stage in the construction of Thunderbird 4. Uh, it's painted, weathered, the construction's finished. Um, and we've done the interior but as of yet there is not a figure sitting in the seat and now it's time to try and create uh, a Gordon Tracy to sit in there and make it look more realistic. Well, here's a bit of a spoiler. And for those of you that don't want to watch the rest of the video and are only interested in seeing what the Gordon Tracy figure looks like, here he is. Now this figure was made entirely from scratch. And if you want to know how I made him, you'll have to watch the rest of the video. Now my starting point to try and make a figure of Gordon Tracy was to download a driver from the internet. This is designed for one eighth scale radio control cars. And I thought maybe I can use that and make something somewhat realistic enough to be fit for the model. Now obviously that figure was way too big. So here's a scaled down version of it. Uh, getting closer to the right size, but there are still problems with this in that the legs are too long and the head is too small. So I had to do a little bit of fiddling on the 3D printer and rescale those areas. And I came up with this version, which has a shorter legs that would actually fit on the seat and a bigger head. But unfortunately, this looks, looks absolutely nothing like a Thunderbirds puppet. And uh, however I painted it, I didn't think it was going to be very realistic. So in order to get a more realistic head here, I turned to a technique that's called photogrammetry. Now, photogrammetry is a, a method of creating a 3D object out of photographs. And what you do is you take dozens of photographs of a particular object, load them up into some specialized software, and the software reconstructs a 3D image from those photographs. And in order to do that, I would need to have a starting point of a realistic head from a Thunderbirds puppet. Now, it just so happens I do have a detailed figure of a Thunderbirds character, and it's this one here of Alan Tracy. But you can see he's got a very detailed face and a lovely hat. And so what I try to do using photogrammetry is to take hundreds of pictures of this figure's head and then use a software program to convert it into a 3D printable object. So I started off by taking all these photographs of Alan Tracy's head and you, you, you have to take lots and lots from very slightly different angles. And you can see here, I'm just working my way around his head, uh, going all the way around, uh, making sure you get every angle. Uh, then taking some more from different angles, some from above, some more close-ups. And uh, then when you've got this full set of photographs, you then have to upload them into a software called Meshroom. So this is the Meshroom program. This is available for free. Uh, you can download it. And this is what the interface looks like. So first of all is you import port all those photographs that you've taken of your object into the software and it stores them all here and it checks them to make sure they're going to be okay. And then there's a series of steps at the bottom here that the software will do where it transforms all that collection of photographs into a 3D image here and you can see it's constructed a 3D image of Alan Tracy there. And when you're happy with it, if you've got enough photographs and you're happy with the 3D construction, you tell the software to go to the end and it creates this file containing all the 3D uh, data points to reconstruct that as a model. Now for the next phase, I imported that file that was created in Meshroom into this other program, which is called Blender. Now this allows you to tidy the model up because the, the, three, uh, the 3D image that comes out of Meshroom is not perfect. And you have to use another program to delete 
any parts of uh, the scan that look rough like at the bottom here and around the edge and so you use this blender program to tidy it up and then you can save the file as an STL file that can be read by a 3D printer. And for the final phase of this process, I could then import the 3D file that had been created into the slicer program. And I used the Prusa slicer that came with my printer. And here you can see the 3D rendition of Alan Tracy's head. Uh, then you can slice that and send it to your 3D printer for printing. Now this is the object that I ended up with off my 3D printer. Now you can see that it's far from perfect, uh, but it has given a pretty good representation of the original Thunderbird face. A Little bit of a problem around his nose, but the face, hair and hat has come out okay. Now if this was a prototype and it's obviously too big, what I needed to do was scale this down uh, to the appropriate scale for the model. So here's a smaller version getting closer to the right size and uh, just the head and the bust and it's looking pretty good. So I was quite happy with this and now what I needed to do was put this head onto a body. So I found a much better body on the internet. This one is actually articulated and you can move the legs, the torso and the arms and uh, this printed in one piece, it's quite remarkable, but it did. And what I did is I just, uh, using the slicing software, attached the head of Alan Tracy here onto this body. And so we were now getting a much more realistic uh, Thunderbirds type puppet, but obviously this is the wrong scale because the body is way too big for the head. So I needed to shrink down the body to get it into the right proportion. And after several attempts and numerous failures, I ended up with this. So what I've actually done here is I've shortened the legs on this articulated body, kept the body the same size and the arms and fastened the head of Alan Tracy onto the top of it. And now I've got a seated figure that's the right scale for the model and will actually sit in the seat. Now, before anybody points this out, I do appreciate that this is a face of Alan Tracy and it should really be Gordon Tracy, but I didn't have Gordon Tracy. And I think when it's painted and it's sitting in the cockpit behind the canopy, I hope you won't be able to tell the difference. Now I'm gonna have a go at painting his face and I'm gonna use these acrylic paints. I've got a uh, two different skin tones here and I might put in a little bit of red to make the cheeks a bit redder. Um, so just mix those up and see how they look. Now I'm going to try and mix up that hair colour. Well, I'm not the best at painting faces, but I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Now I'm going to try and make him some clothes out of this piece of cloth here. So I'll, I'll see how that works out. Now it's a bit rough and ready this, but I'm actually just tacking this cloth on with super glue. Now for some of the other details, I've just printed these out on a piece of photo paper from a photograph. Not sure how they're going to look. Well, here he is, and I'm reasonably happy with him. Bear in mind, he's going to be sitting inside the cabin behind the window. So you won't be able to look at him really close up. 
but I'm fairly happy with his general appearance, uh, the appearance of his clothes, the, the sash, his boots, um, his hat. I think he looks okay. And that is what he looks like sitting in the cockpit. He looks all right, doesn't he? Are you all right in there, Gordon? Well, that's it for this video. So it's time to say goodbye from me and goodbye from Gordon. And I'll see you next time on Modelling Misadventures.